Yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another uh, video on the channel. Uh, today, we will be dropping other playoff recap videos, but I want to make this standalone video about Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps the channel grow. Let's get into it. What we have to talk about is obviously Boston's defense, which we'll get into. But I want to focus on the net side of things first. Uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have drastically underperformed for the majority of this entire series, three games in so far. And a big credit to Boston's defense because they're playing them very, very physical, especially Kevin Durant. They have eliminated the easy pull-up three that Kevin Durant typically gets to get himself in the rhythm. He no longer has that. Whenever he has the ball and he takes a dribble from the three into the mid-range, they sell out on KD immediately, and they send multiple wings, Brown, Tatum, Horford as a switchable big, Grant Williams at times, Marcus Smart at times, even Derek White at times. They just have a very lengthy team, by the way. That's why I chose the Celtics to win. I just thought they were a better team, but we'll get into that later as well. The bottom line is Kevin Durant, who is a player that has been regarded by many to be the best player in the league, to be an unstoppable force that no one can really guard, has been looking very human in this series. And I think what we have to focus on, um, I've already credited Boston's defense, but at the same time, you have to put a lot of this on Kevin Durant. If you're being regarded as a top five player, the standard you are held to is greatness. You're, you're expected to outperform against strong playoff defenses because the great ones have always had to do that. And when it comes down to Kevin Durant, I personally feel like he's one of the most uh, talked about stars in the league to where anytime his name comes up, it's he's Kevin Durant. He's seven foot. He has this or that skill set. But when it comes down to playing a defense like Boston that just roams around everywhere and has the personnel and wings to make you feel uncomfortable, I think a lot of the flaws in his game are getting exposed. His lack of being able to really get to the basket at an effective and efficient level. Uh, he can't freight train his way in this series. They're just more physical. So he gets beat up because of that. His game is more so predicated on jump shooting. And Boston is sending multiple bodies everywhere. And the idea that he's seven foot and can shoot over anything, even that has been debunked a little bit in this series based on how they've been guarding him. I've seen his shot blocked multiple times in this series. They're making it hard for him to get to his spots anywhere on the court. And he doesn't really have a counter to that. Last night, he tried to play make more out of it, but that wound up making him less assertive as a player. And... When you wind up letting role players shoot more field goals than you as a superstar, that's not acceptable. You have to find a way to impact the game at a stronger level than that, especially if for other superstars, they get criticism for not doing that. Kevin Durant is not exempt from this in any way, shape, or form. Now that I've made that point, um, I, I do want to give the Boston Celtics a lot of credit because, again, Coach Ime has been spectacular as far as getting the team to buy in on their identity. Because if you remember, early on in the season, the Celtics were having a lot of issues themselves. And Coach Ime had to figure out his system. Uh, the players had to buy in. But once they did, this defense has been all world for a very long time. They're easily a top two defense in the entire league. And there's no ego. These guys understand how to play together. It's not about just Tatum or Brown. It's about the team as a whole. And through these first three games, you've seen that. Tatum still has not shot effectively like you would think he has. He's hit big shots. So is Jalen Brown. But the others, like uh, Al Horford, a uh, Peyton Pritchard, you know, uh, Grant Williams. Like, these, these type of guys on their roster have had immense value in a playoff series like this. Because when it comes down to the playoffs, it's about two things. It's about matchup and personnel. That's what it comes down to every single time and most times if you have a top five player you are looked at as having the better chance to win because talent wins games yes 
but fit around that talent is very important. And the Brooklyn Nets are a team that has been top heavy for a very long time, even when they had James Harden, and they were based to essentially outscore teams. That that was their that was their identity. And if you're watching Steve Nash in any of these games with his adjustments and his rotations, Steve Nash's whole game plan for the entire year was primarily KD and Kyrie get buckets, y'all save us, we gonna win. He ha he hasn't made crazy adjustments to respond to Boston. There hasn't been much ball movement like you would think. Ever since James Harden has left, it's basically turned into KD and Kyrie show. And while that's cool and that works because they're really good players, when you're evaluating basketball, basketball at its core is still a team sport. You have to find ways to get others involved because you're putting more pressure on your superstar players to have to play at that level. And when they're not, like in this series, your flaws and your weaknesses really get exposed. And Boston has done a phenomenal job at doing that. I'm going to have this segment of the video focus on Kevin Durant now. It is unacceptable for a superstar player to shoot 0 for 10 in the second half of a basketball game and have three turnovers in the playoffs. Because if this was Giannis doing this, if this was Steph doing this, if this was LeBron doing this, if this was Kawhi doing this, the energy needs to be consistent for all these players. Because when you're that talented and you're that good at the game, we hold you to a certain caliber, to a different level of regard than we would for other players. And for Kevin Durant, I really feel like this series is making people realize he's human. He walks the regular floor just like everyone else. He's just extremely talented at what he does. And you don't take that away from Kevin Durant, but when you're looking at the playoffs specifically, when you strip the ability from Kevin Durant to have the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with players or to go one-on-one -on -one with inferior mismatches severely, that limits how effective Kevin Durant can be. And in this series, they're taking full advantage of it. And again, you got to give respect to Boston because they have the personnel and the game plan to do it. But the Nets, not only do they not have the personnel, but Steve Nash has not made adjustments as a coach to put Kevin Durant in the right position. So that's a fair point. But at a certain point, if you a star, you got to show up. You got to find a way to impact the game. Like there's other star players who we have, have seen playoff series from not expecting them to win. And they have still found ways to perform against elite defenses. So there's no excuse for Kevin Durant to be playing at this level. It's just bad. And we have to like be honest about that, have an honest dialogue about that, and look at basketball as more than just this guy averages 30, he's seven foot, he can shoot, Kyrie Irving is very, very skilled, he can go left or right. You have to look at basketball. When you have a roaming defense, it's just very hard to be impactful against any of that. And shout out to Boston for doing that. The last thing that I'm going to say on this is, as a Warriors fan at least, this is what a lot of people focused on. Because when Kevin Durant won the finals MVPs, the narrative was that Kevin Durant was the best player on this team. He was the most impactful player on that team. And because of that, he was a better player. But when you're looking at the way that they schemed against the Golden State Warriors, they threw multiple bodies at Stephen Curry. And there's film, I can break this down one day, where you're literally seeing Tyron Lue admit to A, selling out on Steph Curry, making sure that he has multiple guys, to where Kevin Durant then has the opportunity to go single isolation coverage, and you're giving one of the league's best naturally gifted scorers that opportunity. And when that happens, he's going to succeed. And what I think that did was created this aura around KD, like he's a completely unguardable, unstoppable player. And I just want the energy to be consistent because that's not the case. Every player goes through adversity. Kevin Durant is still a great player, don't get me wrong, but I feel like the dialogue needs to change and pivot. And I think that what this series reminds people of is basketball is still basketball. And that's really what matters. I think Brooklyn will get swept. I think it's over. Um, I think Boston is just a better team. I had Boston in six because I just thought they were a better team, but I thought KD and Kyrie would play better but I drastically underestimated the coverages they would be giving Kevin Durant. Um, as far as next season with Ben Simmons, they need to get wing players and they need to figure out 
the coaching situation. Steve Nash should be gone. And if they're able to do that, then they might have a great shot to contend for next season. But outside of that, man, this situation is kind of cooked. And what this also shows is players should not be in charge or have a lot of responsibility for constructing a NBA roster. Uh, GM should not be listening solely to these players. Signing DeAndre Jordan to that contract, they they did it to get Kevin Durant. Bringing on Steve Nash, they did it to get Kevin Durant. Like, you need to focus on roster construction independent of the players. When Steph Curry and Draymond wanted Avery Bradley over Gary Payton, they said, no, we're going to go with Gary Payton. And it's worked wonderfully. You got to respect that. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, there will be some other playoff recaps later on, but I wanted to focus this because I think this is a dialogue that's very important. But if you like the video, make sure to like the video, uh, comment, and subscribe. Let me know how you feel about Kevin Durant and his collapse in this playoff series. Does this alter his legacy at all to you? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, we out, people. Peace.